welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Oh, I am so excited about the program today. Lynn Mink is my special guest, and we will be talking about my favorite subject, quantum faith. So fasten your seatbelt and get ready. Many of you know that I have written a book on the subject, and my dad and I recorded three programs together discussing the fascinating similarities between the teachings of Jesus and quantum physics. Today, we will talk about the observer effect, music, frequency, vibration, sound, and whatever else the Holy Spirit brings <laughs> up. I am really excited. Thank Welcome you. to Concepts of Faith, Lynn Mink. Thank you, Annette. It's a joy to be with you, and especially on this program, yes. we can talk about your favorite subject, my favorite yeah. subject, and mine, especially as it relates to music, worship, and praise. Yes, vibration and sound. You know, it's been a blessing to have your lovely wife, Kathy, on with me the yeah. previous three weeks. And so we've been holding you off till last because this subject is one that has really skyrocketed, literally. And we want to cover a lot of things today. But for those of you out there that are going, what, what, what? I thought this was a religious program. They're going to talk about <laughs> physics. Well, hang on. You're going to you're gonna want to hear this because it like is this. really important. Because uh, Now, Lynn is a, a, a gifted singer and psalmist, and he knows about sound and music. We're going to talk about that, too. But we're going to be kind of all-inclusive and follow the Holy Spirit today. So uh, one of the things about quantum faith is when we start talking about it, and even if you talk about quantum physics, all right, people's minds go, what, what, wait, 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 wait. This, mm -hmm. you know, their mind kind of um, gets to them. But I started thinking about this while I was feeding the cows. <laughs> so what else is, <laughs> what else is new? You always What else that. is new? Well, I love your stories, uh, your revelations you get from yeah. while you're out on the farm, you know? Yes, while I'm out on the farm. <laughs> of course, my dad, you know, he got all of his revelations in the deer stand. Yeah, he did. So, uh, but I, I, I began to think about it because, you know, I know you're a scuba diver. Mm -hmm. And you taught, I actually taught my dad to scuba mm -hmm. dive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to scuba dive. And when you go down to the, into the ocean, particularly for the first time, it is like you are on a different planet. Uh -huh. You're in a different world. I mean, you just drop in there, you flip off backwards off of the boat and you go down and there's fish that are swimming in schools. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of... Um, things that you don't ever see here, up here. And it's a world governed by different laws yes. that you're not normally every day in touch with. Yes. So the, the excitement uh, that, yes. that you're experiencing when you first go under, you know, is absolutely beyond description. That's why I got hooked on diving a long yes. time ago. Yes, it's, it's, you are in a place where the rules don't apply that apply on the surface. And mm -hmm. let me use this for example. How many of you, if I told you, you could go from here to the grocery store without using your feet on your head, would believe it? Now they're, you know, they're thinking, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, I, one particular time I was scuba diving in the ocean and we went off of the wall. You know what that means, off of the wall. Oh, and yeah. It was like a 14,000 foot drop. And so we were just going to float along and look at all the beautiful coral and the fish and everything. And I was having a problem with my BC, my flotation device. And it, it wanted to turn me over. And everybody else is swimming along, you know, the wall like this. But mine kept wanting to do like this. So I thought, well, what difference does it make? So I went along the wall for I don't know however long we were down there, and I went upside down on my head with my feet <laughs> in the air, my head down here, looking and paying attention, and watching the fish, and I just went that way on my head the whole way. And my husband thinks that's the funniest thing he'd ever seen. <laughs> but you know, it didn't make any difference that I went upside down on my head mm -hmm. because I was in a different world. Uh -huh. 
and the rules down there and the laws there are different than they are up here. Yes, they are. The rules of the spirit are also different than the rules in the physical, right? Mm, totally. totally. So if we really want to get into the realm of the spirit, we have to be open to different rules and different laws that apply in the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways to look at that is to look at quantum physics and compare it to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll never forget something you said one time. We were doing an interview at the oasisradionetwork.org, which is a wonderful place. It is. And we were doing an interview, actually you were interviewing me, you and your lovely wife, Kathy. And we were talking about quantum faith and I was talking about sound and vibration. And you said, well, you know that if you start strumming a chord on a guitar and there's a guitar standing in the corner, that it will start to resonate mm -hmm. and play the same. Do you and remember saying that to yes, me? Yes, and Annette, that was when I was a young boy. We were, we were raised up in the highlands of Virginia around the 5,000 foot level, about as high as Denver, Colorado or higher. And, uh, that's another whole ecosystem, another mm -hmm. whole a group of people, another whole culture, everything. So we all played handmade instruments and store-bought instruments, and we all played acoustic music. And I'll never forget one Sunday afternoon, uh, we were playing after church, and um, I was over having a little soda, taking a little uh, you know, break, and I'd put my guitar on the wall next to me, and as my family were playing, I was playing a song over there, I heard this guitar playing on its own, and I was going, <laughs> Dad, something weird's going on. <laughs> he said, son, that's called a sympathetic vibration. I said, what's that? And he said, well, the sound waves from our live music, when we pluck the strings, yes. uh, are go is going through the air, and the string that is attuned to that frequency is receptive to that frequency that it's tuned in, and it begins to respond in kind as kind of a reply to the source of music on the other side of the room. And I thought, wow. And then as I've grown in the Lord, I know that He is sending out frequencies constantly mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit, and we are attuned to Him and His frequencies, and we need to sympathetically vibrate and respond to the message of the Lord via the Holy Spirit, particularly as we read it in the Word. And you know the, the 11th chapter of Hebrews called the, the, hall of, the mm -hmm. Faith Hall of Fame. Right. Uh, verse 13 says something, or verse 3, excuse me, says something that kind of goes along with this, uh, well, let me just read it. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. And here it is so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. What does that mean? Well, there's another whole uh, set of rules that created everything that we say, that, that we can see with our physical eyes. I was out on a, you know that I enjoy camping and mm -hmm. survival and bushcraft and all that. I was out one night a couple of years back in the Lord. It's a beautiful night, no ambient light from a city anywhere, full of the stars in the sky just filled with beautiful. I thought, this is the way it was the night Jesus was born. This is what Abraham saw, and God said, you're going to be the father of this many people, yeah. and all that. And I just thought, wow, Lord, you're just so awesome. There's the Milky Way. There's Orion. And I studied all this in yeah. scouting, you know, and growing mm -hmm. up. And the Lord said, uh, I have something to tell you. And I said, well, what? And he said, uh, you know, you're looking at the macro universe, mm -hmm. all of this from here out, but I'm going to introduce you to the micro inner universe from here smaller, not here bigger, but here smaller. And uh, mankind has dubbed that the quantum universe. Yes. The tiny, tiny, tiny little things that make it's, up everything that we like see. It's like a giant box. Let's say you get it. Here's a way to understand it in good old hillbilly terms like me. I, I, this way I understand it. 
it's a giant box. God gives you this giant box, and then you open it, and there's a smaller box around the inside. It just barely fits it. And then you open that one, a smaller one, open that one, a smaller one, and so yeah. on and so forth. That's what the quantum world is, because these little building blocks that get smaller and smaller and smaller as science advances, you know. By the way, science is just the discipline of discovering what God made. Yes. And then some scientist puts his name on it, and you know, he's not the originator. So this micro universe, this, this quantum universe, the, these particles that are the tiniest building blocks, uh, smaller than molecules, smaller than atoms, and the sub, 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 box within the box within the box. The subatomic the particles. They're the subatomic particles. Part, yeah. They're so tiny, and they're the building blocks. And there's really no end to sight. He said these words to me, it is, it is equally as vast going into the micro world as it is into the macro world. Now think of that, because science tells us that when God spoke, and I believe sang the universe into existence, yes. uh, it is creating, it is being created at the speed of like 186,000 uh, miles per second. And that's fast, and they say it's even speeding up. And it, it never quit, those words let there be, never quit creating. Think, so if it's yeah. continually creating that way, it's continually creating the inner world as fast and right. as vast. Well, think, now, think, think is, of it, yeah, think of it, whew. Lynn, when God said, God didn't say, oh, well, let's see, I think I want to create light, uh, let's see, you know, God said, <laughs> light be uh -huh. and light was and uh -huh. then he gave us that same ability to speak and to create with our words. And I want to go back to the resonating thing again because yeah. I want people to get this, especially after they heard what Kathy and I were talking about, about rejection, inferiority, uh -huh. harnessing your thoughts and all that. Let's talk about the part of quantum physics that talks about the observer effect. You uh -huh. know when you go in the ocean and you flip off the boat backwards and you go down and there's a school of fish and there's all kinds of things going on down there. You're in a different world. But what quantum physics tells us is that by observing, you disrupt the system, right? Mm -hmm, sure. So have you ever noticed when you dropped off the boat and went in, in the uh, uh, ocean and the fish were swimming in a school, the minute you went plop and you displaced the water, mm -hmm. <laughs> those fish, they scatter, they, they they're, respond uh, they're to They're out of sync, so to speak. Yeah, okay, so I think most everybody that's listening today can understand that, that when you drop in that water and those fish respond to you being there and looking at them, even though you're not shooting them or doing anything to them, they are being responsive to uh -huh. that, okay? So in the same way we're talking about quantum faith, we're talking about the smallest molecules respond to us. And when there is someone who feels and vibrates with that frequency of rejection mm -hmm. and uh, inferiority, guess what they're going to resonate with? And guess what? Absolutely. Everywhere they go, the environment is going to resonate with rejecting them. Well, you've heard the phrase regarding abuse, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Let me just say it again. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And it's exactly why. Yes. Uh, pain, these, these painful frequencies, they're toxic. And yeah. if a person has had these frequencies uh, 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 put upon them by an adult figure, particularly early in their life, mm -hmm. they become a repository for all of this, this negative energy mm -hmm. and all of these negative thoughts, which are energy, uh, based things uh, in your brain. They're electronic impulses in, in the memory of your, your brain. And uh, we, like God, we're created in the image of God. It means that we're speaking spirits. We too yeah. speak life or death because the Word says life and death is in the power, power of the tongue. tongue. Yes. And here's the deal about thoughts. You and Kathy were talking about thoughts a couple yeah. weeks ago in your program. Uh, the idea of a pastor, 
Now let's just get down to the bottom line. The idea of a Christian leader, the idea of a friend, the idea of reading the Word, the idea of, of steeping yourself in the things of God is to ultimately get you to utter words mm -hmm. one way or another. Yes. It's to get you to say something. Why? Because the words will guide your path. Yes. Now, when I was in the military, I served with a bunch of guys for a while, and uh, I was a Navy corpsman, uh, which is a medic for those of you unlearned. <laughs> and uh, we had to do some uh, things with Marine Corps one day. And we had these old World War II grappling hooks with the ropes mm -hmm. with the knots on them. And we'd throw them up on the top of the cliff and hook them and pull ourselves up to the next level unhook it, throw it up to the next level. Everybody's seen that in World War II movies, you know. And that's what our words are. Yes. Our mouths are like grappling hooks that shoot words out, that shoot energy yes. out, that shoot uh, uh, containers of power out and affix somewhere, and then we pull ourselves into the future yes. uh, With, on, that, yes. on that rope. Of those words that we uttered. That, that is absolutely a wonderful description of what happens. That, that just, I can see that and I can picture that. And that is from our words. Our words, what we speak, produces sound, produces vibration, right? Right. And when and it's so, carried in song, it is exponentially stronger than just the spoken word. You're jumping ahead of me. That's where I was going next. Well, I noticed the clock so says good. that we don't have much time left. <laughs> that was so, so good. Uh, go ahead. But that is it. It <laughs> is it. It's the singing of it. And um, the wanted to bring bring that out because we started with the guitar and the the reverberation, the resonance, you know, the sympath what do you call it? The sympathetic sympathetic vibration. Sympathetic vibration. So we are putting this out. The Word of God puts out a vibration. Absolutely. And we want to uh, be in agreement and resonate with that. But these sounds and vibrations are powerful. And I want to bring this out real quick. The Lord took me to Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all assembled together in one place. When suddenly there came a sound sound <laughs> from heaven like a rushing violent tempest blast mm -hmm. and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting and there appeared to them tongues resembling fire which were separated and distributed and that settled on each one of them and they were all filled with uh -huh. the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. At that moment when that sound whatever it was that it says it was like a violent tempest blast. Mm -hmm. There was a powerful vibratory effect on mm -hmm. the people in that room that changed their lives forever. And the world forever. And the world yeah. forever. It yeah. came with a sound. So given the fact that we have this sound that made a major change, and then we have First Thessalonians 4 that says, what does it say? That the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, shout and the voice of an archangel and with the trump, trump. of God. And it is, go it is so powerful, this vibratory effect, an energetic effect is so powerful, it is going to raise the dead mm -hmm. and it's going to quicken us. Uh -huh. So given we have here and we have here, how important is it that we sing and we worship and we take the vibration of sound to usher in the presence and power of God? Do you think that's an important oh, issue? Oh, that's a hugely important issue. Are we wasting our lives saying frivolous, empty things? Or actually, nothing's ever empty. Let's get that straight. Something is inside of what you're saying. You carry a. Uh, in the words that you, well, your father said something, a thought unborn or a thought unspoken dies unborn. unborn. Let me yes. say it again. A thought unspoken or not spoken dies unborn. So thoughts are internal self-talk. They are, they are thoughts, they, they, they are words, mental words that are either going to be spoken or not spoken. So 
That's why you have to judge carefully about uh, the words that you're going to say, that you're going to launch, because when you launch them, you've heard the old thing, words have a life of their own, choose wisely. Very, very important. Yeah, yeah so, it, yeah, so I, we don't have much time. I want you to get to this. So if it's so important what we say in everyday life, how important is it what we say when we're singing in church? Vitally important. Uh, if you just have the spoken word, Annette, uh, look at the spoken word with a little square square uh, corners on them. The spoken word goes in. Uh, the Holy Spirit helps that. But if it has music attached to it, all those sharp and rough edges are off. The, the music acts as a lubricant, as an oil, so to mm -hmm. speak, to slip the meaning of whatever those words have embedded in them into the deepest recesses of your human person. Wow. And uh, you can't, I mean, God has not, I'm going to say a heavy here. Write this down. God wired us with no defense against music. Oh, wow. <clears throat> I have just come to realize this. See, years ago when I was a young, a young boy and I learned that I could sing and play guitar and I became good at it, and long story short, I ended up with my own television show. I ended up on The Tonight Show, Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, Steve Allen, all those things, young man on the way up, singer, you know, big bands, rock and roll, you name it. But as they say, a funny thing happened on the way to hell, I got saved. And when I did, I found out the reason for music. I was saved in a Christian bookstore. My life was a shambles, even though I was successful externally, as Kathy was, accept, was successful as a model in New York, and all this. And we had, we had looked and looked and looked for all of these various depths of meanings and all these Eastern religions and everything found nothing but toxicity and death and darkness. So in that bookstore, Kathy gave her heart to the Lord two weeks earlier in a hamburger joint. I gave mine to the Lord in a bookstore. People can come to the Lord in a church. Novel idea. I wish it happened more. But uh, I was in that bookstore. As I grabbed the doorknob symbolically to open the door and step out into the world for the rest of my life as a brand new squeaky clean born again believer, I said to the Lord out, out loud, I said, what do I do with the rest of my life? And I'd, gotten out, I'd just gotten out of the Navy. I knew what marching orders were. And I said, what are my marching orders? What do you want me to do? He said, it's real simple, particularly with your music. Just create an atmosphere for me to be myself wherever you go, whatever you do. Create wow. an atmosphere for me to be myself, and I'll do the rest. So singing creates an atmosphere Absolutely. for the power of God to move. So if we come to church or wherever we meet together, wherever we are, and we're singing, oh, Lord, I'm a worm in the dust, you know, and we're singing about our sins, we're singing about ourselves, we are not creating a vibratory essence that brings in the presence and power of God. We're singing junk. You're saying stuff that does not line not, up with the frequencies of the Word of God. Right. What if? We're, but if we're singing, worthy is the Lamb, holy, which I know you do, Lynn, yeah. I've watched you. Worthy is the Lamb, holy are you, Lord. You're worthy, you're mighty in power. And we're singing those words. The power and presence of God comes down in so many people today because we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. So many people today do not get the point no. that you can't get up and sing about yourself and all the woes of life and bring in the presence of God. I was in a quote contemporary music service and I know genres, genres and, and styles change. It's this, this ain't your dad's Buick, you know. I know I understand all that, but at the same time, you can't throw out the anointing. <laughs> Have you ever seen, see there's a difference uh, write this one down too. There's a difference between a worship leader and a lead worshiper. A worship leader is someone that can bring it off with impeccable precision, beautiful, beautifully performed, but not a shred of anointing anywhere on the music. And yet, on the other hand, uh, that's a worship leader. A lead worshiper is someone that's been with the Lord privately behind closed doors and it could be grandma with a missing tooth and a busted <laughs> string on her guitar up in the mountains in Virginia. And she comes out 
Again, she gets tears coming to my car. Yeah. She's been with the Lord. Yes. And she hits that guitar yes. and starts worshiping the Lord. That's worship. I was in a service, the, and all heaven comes down, in a service the other day with a lot of the new songs, which I do a lot of the new songs too. There's some very good ones and some not so good ones. And uh, it, it's amazing. I counted 18 I, me, yeah. my in that one song of three and a half minutes. 18. Yes. Not one, you or worship or, you know, yes. this way. Well, we've got just a few <sighs> seconds here. And all I've got to say is I believe the anointing of God is a vibratory essence straight yes. from the throne of God. Yes. And when you worship God for who He is, that vibratory essence flows into your life. Yes. And it is a sound and it is a vibration. Well, well, yes. I don't, we got to stop. We got to stop. <laughs> well, I know you're going to want to study and think about this subject for longer than this 30 minute show. You will probably have to watch it several times and give a lot of thought to it. So, I have a special package to offer today on the subject of quantum faith. And it's a, an album and it contains my mini book that I wrote on the subject of quantum faith. And I have a single CD teaching that I did in a church on the subject of quantum faith. And then I have also the DVD of today's program with Lynn Mink. And that's all in a nice little package here, $22 plus shipping and handling. It's all for 2525, and the number is 877-396-9400, or go to caps.tv. Now, this book and this teaching has been an eye-opener for a lot of people. Our office receives letters and emails constantly from people who want new material on this subject, and today's program has added some exciting food for thought. You know, I've found that my mind really needs to be challenged to think of things in a different way because it opens the door for more understanding and revelation of the power of God and the power of our choice to believe. Now, this album contains my book, Quantum Faith, and a single teaching CD on quantum faith that I recorded in a church and a DVD of today's program with Lynn Mink. It's $22 plus shipping and handling, offer $25.25. Call the number on the screen or you can go to caps.tv and it will take you directly to the product offered today. While you're on that website, check out all of our products. We have an abundance of CD teachings, audiobooks, MP3s, DVDs, and links to all of our eBooks. You can also sign up for our podcast. Between my dad's books, my books, my sister's children's books, we have over 40 books available. So check it out, and thank you for joining us today, and please tune in next week for another exciting program of Concepts of Faith. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.